Hey guys, welcome back. Today I think we're going to take a look at a more of a budget GPU. Uh, this is a GPU released in 2009. It's an NVIDIA GT240. Uh, it has 512 megabytes of GDDR5 on a 128-bit bus. Um, it's got a core clock speed of 550 megahertz and a memory speed of 850. This GPU does support DirectX 10 and uh, once again we're using the GeForce driver 342.01. Um, obviously, this GPU wouldn't be very good on newer titles, but we're going to see if it might be an option for older games. And a test system, uh, once again, is the FX8350. We have 8GB of DDR3, uh, 1866, and Windows 7 on a 256GB SSD. So again, I'm going to be using CapFrame X to capture the data. And uh, if you like the looks of this, uh, I'm going to leave a link below so you can check it out for your own testing purposes. Um, I'm just going to delete all the old data I have, and that, that way we can just start fresh. And uh, I think the first thing we're going to do is run 3 Mark Vantage quick, just to get a GPU score before we jump into some games. Uh, 3 Mark Vantage is a DX10 benchmark, so I tend to use that for all the GPUs that support it. And you can see the performance isn't looking all that great, but we're going to let the benchmark finish and we'll take a look at the score. All right, so now that that's done, our total score was 5590, but we're really only interested in a GPU score, and that was uh, 4469. So not very good when you compare it to the score of a single GTX 260, which was 9418, so that was actually more than double. But uh, then again, this is a budget card, so we have to keep our expectations realistic. So let's see how it does in some games. Uh, we're going to try to push this GPU at 1080p where possible, uh, shooting for at least 30 FPS, and, and I'm going to list the settings for each game as well. So without further ado, uh, let's jump into some games.
So, it seems that while the GT240 may have been a bottom of the barrel choice for games in its era, uh, it works pretty decent for older games, and uh, without the need for a PCI Express power cable, uh, it could definitely be a very good option for a retro gaming PC. I think that's probably where this one's going to end up too, is I do have a system where I think this would fit in perfectly. It's nice that sometimes uh, budget GPUs from one era are actually a good alternative to use for an earlier era. Uh, in this case, I would say a Windows XP PC would be a good home for this card, especially in this time when uh, even a lot of used GPUs are commanding quite a premium online. These can also be found quite reasonably. Just a quick search of eBay and I found this one, which is identical to the one I'm using here for dirt cheap. Uh, there are plenty of others reasonably priced as well, so but you just need to be careful selecting one as some of them do uh, state that they use GDDR3. So it's good to have options, especially in these times. And uh, right now, you know, a, a new PC might be unreasonable, but uh, you can definitely build a retro PC very reasonably if you're careful which parts you select. So hopefully one of you guys found this interesting. Uh, you guys take care, and I will see you all soon.